just 244 votes to put forward for appointment to the position of public protector, the current acting public protector, Kaleka Kaleka. Lawson Naidu is the executive secretary at the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution. Uh, Lawson, good evening to you and thank you for your time tonight on this developing story. Uh, what should be the first agenda item after Kaleka's appointment? What needs to be her priority? Would it be restoring some of the legitimacy of this office? Uh, absolutely, and that's going to be a, a mammoth task for her, Stephen, because uh, as we've seen in what played out in the National Assembly uh, today uh, was the politicization of that office, which has happened over a period of time uh, under the, the former public protector, Mr. Sivan Kobane. Uh, and, uh, you know, whoever was going to come into this, and it's, uh, you know, Koleka Koleka now, uh, is going to have a huge task in, in um, uh, you know, rebuilding public trust in that institution. And we know. Uh, from the judgment of the Constitutional Court in the Inkandla matter, what a critical institution this is in holding uh, public officials to account. And therefore, the, uh, it, it's absolutely necessary that public trust and confidence be restored to that institution. She's going to have her work cut out in doing that. Uh, and she really ought to be assisted by Parliament in, uh, in, in, in that task. But the way Parliament has behaved today uh, means that Parliament is not going to be able to play that role uh, to uh, to strengthen public confidence in that institution. So I think it's a, it's a sad day for, for Parliament. Um, it seems to me that, in fact, she's coming into office with less support, certainly less political support, than any other public protector before her. Busasim Kobani had the support of the ANC and the EFF. Uh, Tuli Madonsela, of course, had the support of a unanimous parliament. They all voted in her favour. Uh, before her, Lawrence Mushwana and Selby Bakwa, going all the way back now to 1995, both appointed at a time when the ANC had much greater political support, both in parliament and, I suppose, Lawson, across society. Does that actually make it even harder for Koleka Kaleka? Indeed it does, because, you know, uh, you know, clearly she does not have the the full backing of all the parties represented in the National Assembly. They're taking quite, uh, uh, quite divisive lines in this, and we, you know, the scenes we saw play out in the National Assembly today uh, with parties walking out and not being present for the vote, uh, you know, undermines the, the integrity of, of Parliament as an institution, brings Parliament itself into disrepute, and, and, and you know, certainly has a knock-on effect uh, on the vote that was uh, 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 conducted today. And, uh, you know, it, it does leave a cloud hanging over uh, Kaleka uh, uh, as she comes into office uh, as the public protector once the president has formally made the appointment. Uh, so she's going to have a massive task to, uh, to restore that confidence, but also to restore the morale of the staff uh, in the public protector's office. It's an institution. It's not a one-person show. Uh, there are offices across all nine provinces. And, you know, uh, uh, they need uh, to be supported in doing, their, uh, doing the work that they do. They need, there needs to be public confidence that when the members of the public bring grievances to that office, they have confidence that it will be dealt with uh, expeditious, as expeditiously, that it will be dealt with fairly, uh, and without fear and favor, and holding public officials and even elected officials and members of the executive to account. So that's the, the, the scale of the task that... Uh, uh, advocate uh, Kaleka now faces. I mean, within all of this, she can only really do that based on the cases that are brought to her, the complaints lodged by people. And Lawson, need I remind you, there's an election next year, and it seems unlikely to me that corruption claims against anyone in government are going to go away. I mean, some of these are going to be real hot potatoes. Indeed, indeed they are. Uh, you know, and I think it speaks to a broader issue about our law enforcement capacity. Uh, because quite, uh, you know, uh, many of these cases should really uh, be dealt with by law enforcement agencies rather than by the Office of the Public Protector. Uh, but we know that in the past, because of the failures of those law enforcement uh, agencies, the Hawks and the NPA in the past, uh, many of those complaints were brought to the door of the uh, Public Protector. Um, but as those uh, institutions have been rebuilt and uh, rehabilitated, uh, certainly some of the more serious uh, corruption uh, issues should be dealt with by law enforcement agencies rather than by the Office of the Public Protector because they're probably better resourced and capacitated to conduct the kind of complex investigations that some of these corruption allegations entail. Lawson, it would seem to me that uh, to many people, uh, Koleka is still really defined by her findings in the Palapala case. Uh, she made no findings against President Suram Aphorza and said he had uh, no case to answer. I must also say the Reserve Bank has come to a similar finding, although 
I think there are still questions based only on Ramaphosa's version, if you read through it. Um, there are various court cases that are going to challenge her findings. And that how important is that? If she is found to, if she is overruled by a judge or a series of judges and found to have wrongfully cleared President Ramaphosa, that might well define her uh, view, the view of most people, before she even really starts her term. Well, it, it, it is going to be uh, a defining moment for her. But, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, dependent, uh, Stephen, if she does lose the case, which is not a foregone conclusion, uh, the basis of which she loses. Uh, you know, she's put forward uh, a legal argument to justify the finding that she ultimately made. Uh, and it may have been a, a, a bona fide uh, conclusion that she reached. There's no uh, question of her uh, being biased uh, or not being uh, impartial in the matter. And that's really... Uh, the, the critical issue that will define uh, w whether this cloud really descends uh, over her even more or whether she gets the benefit of the doubt, even if she got the law wrong. Lawson Naidu, thank you very much indeed, Executive Secretary of the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution. Well, I'm sure there'll be more reaction uh, on this developing story through the evening on News at Prime.